Okay, problem two. Charlie wishes to take out a two-year loan for £2,000 from Scott Loans. The annual effective rate is 5%. Charlie will make regular level monthly payments. Use the spreadsheet to calculate the amount Charlie would pay each month and the total amount of interest Charlie would pay. Okay, so let's take a look at this spreadsheet and see what we've got. We've been given a spreadsheet here. We've got labels for interest rate, monthly effective rate, loan amount. So let's fill some things in straight to it. We know this is 5%, we're told. We're told it's 5% in the question. Let's have a look at the loan amount. The loan amount is £2,000. Okay, that's fine. And the monthly level repayment. Well, actually, this is what we're trying to find out, isn't it? We need to, this is the question, the amount Charlie would pay each month. We're given this, we're given the time in months. So we've got 24 months, which makes sense because we're told it's a two year loan. Okay, so we're happy with that column. The, re, the repayment, well, that's just this. The repayment is just whatever the, the monthly level repayment is. Remember, regular means it's happening in a, in a regular interval, in this case, monthly. Uh, a level means it's gonna be the same each month. Okay, so we'll find that it's gonna be the same amount each month. Um, you might find that for the very last month, we've got to change it up a bit. But we'll come to that when, when we when we get there. But regular means it's gonna be this monthly thing and level means it's the same amount. So I'm just gonna fill this in now, actually. This is this, right? How much is being paid is whatever this monthly level repayment is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the dollar notation sign here because it's, it's always gonna be this. B6 is always going to be this payment. So it's showing up as zero. And the reason it's showing up as zero is because I've not got anything in here. Say I make this 100, you'll see that changes to 100 pounds. Uh, this column here is the interest content. So the interest content is how much of that payment is going towards paying the interest on the loan. So the interest on the loan is going to be, again, why don't we do this? The interest is going to be whatever's at, whatever's left outstanding. So however much money the loan, you know, there's still left on this loan, multiplied by this monthly interest rate. So I suppose we need to, before we start filling this in, we need to know what's left outstanding. Well, at, at the end of the first month, uh, or rather month zero, I should say, here at month zero, the, the outstanding capital is the two grand. Yeah, two thousand pounds is what he's borrowed this will go down each month because he's paying off the loan really what we want is we want this to be zero we want at the end of 24 months to have zero right here and this just being a, a series of decreasing numbers going from 2000 all the way down to zero when he's totally paid off so we'll have a look at that the, i suppose we should start by finding this monthly effective rate so what actually is five thousand pounds uh, five thousand what exactly is five percent as uh, uh, per year as a monthly amount so if you go back to pro so this is problem two if you go back to problem one we'll, you'll see how we've dealt with this in the past we simply do one plus the five percent so one plus this interest rate to the power of one divided by 12 because there's only you know there's 12 months in a year so it's one twelfth of a year is a month uh, and then we need to subtract one to get that so that's our monthly effective rate is no point for one percent okay it's important that you understand what what's going on here let's just see how you do this on a calculator if someone said to me all right i get five percent per year per item right if i if it's five percent per year as a multiplier you you know to increase by five percent you times by no point uh, sorry 1.05 that's what you multiply by to do a, a percentage increase of five percent you'll remember this from s2 or s3 right you times by 1.05 uh, notice that to do a percentage increase you add one that's that's all that's happening here if i just go back to if i just go back here to, to what i've typed one plus b3 that one is just me acknowledging that to raise by five percent is to do 1.05 as, as you you multiply um and the subtraction well if you do this so if i go back to back to here if I do that to the power of a, one over 12, if I if I do 1.05 to the power of uh, one over 12 on my calculator, that's gonna come out as 
dot 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 you know carry on for a while and again that's just to acknowledge that this is the decimal multiplier that's what you times by to increase um by 0.41 percent so if you're asking me what the actual percentage interest is i would just subtract this one away and get 0.0041 which is what we've got here the monthly the monthly rate over here is 0.41 percent if you're not happy with that go back to go back to problem one and have a look at problem one and read through the read through the answer there and make sure that you're happy with what exactly this this is is going on about because uh, otherwise it just looks like black magic right let's clear the screen okay so we've done that so let's have a look at this interest content then so the interest content is going to be whatever's left so let's type this let's put this into into excel whatever's left well whatever's left is here what what you know the outstanding capital is whatever's left times by the monthly interest rate times by b4 again i'm going to use the dollar sign here because that that b4 is not going to change that's not going anywhere okay that's what this is the interest content 8.15 now be careful the cell has been formatted if you go into format cells you'll notice it's been it's been formatted to only show us two decimal places if i just click this for a wee bit let's just go a bit nuts here that's actually what the interest content is it's 8.148247 blah 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 you get the point it's not actually this cell is not actually 8.15 it's actually 8.148 blah 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 now that's that's nonsense because we're talking about money charlie can't possibly be paying you know money to this level of accuracy you can only you can only do te two decimal places and it's not enough just to have the cells formatted that way it's not enough just to have it like that you've got to actually go in and round this amount to two decimal places so let's do that rounding it's dead easy it's equals round whatever the calculation is comma two or the two because we want two decimal places if we wanted three it'd be comma three etc so that's that done so that's actually rounded now to be a sensible amount the capital content that's how much money how much of that 100 pounds charlie's going to spend paying down that loan so in other words, it's going to be the hundred pounds that he's spending minus what he's having to pay towards the interest. So to be clear, if Charlie pays a hundred pounds a month, for that first month he has to pay eight pounds fifteen to pay down the interest, to pay the, the monthly interest, and then he pays ninety one pounds eighty five towards the actual debt itself of two grand. So what's left over is this amount, whatever he had. You know whatever he still has to pay minus what he actually pays off towards the capital that interest money's lost right that, that the money he pays in the interest is not going towards paying down his debt that's going that's paying the interest so after one month if you left with one thousand nine hundred and eight pounds and fifteen now what i can do is i can drag this down i can drag this down I can drag this down. Okay. Now the reason this is all worked, you'll notice the point of these dollar signs. For example, E27. Okay. E28, E29. As I drag it down, this changes, so it's referring to the correct thing. But the dollar sign means it's always going to use the the monthly effective rate, and that doesn't change. So that's the point of the dollar sign. Just to make sure we're always using this cell here first comment I'll, I'll make is at the end of the, the 24th month he's actually paid back too much he's actually overpaid by 310 pounds and 90p so 100 pounds is too big let's try 50. imagine if you paid 50 pounds a month well if you paid 50 pounds a month he's nowhere near paid off after two years he'd still owe 947 pounds and 7p so the answer is somewhere between 50 and 100 now, what we're not going to do is spend all day doing trial and error, trying lots of different things until we get the right answer, because that's just going to take way, way too much time. Instead, what we're going to do is use goal seek. Remember, I want this cell here 
E twenty uh, E thirty seven. I want that cell to be um, to be zero. Okay, I want this cell here to be zero. So let's use goal seek for that. So let's go to data. Let's go to uh, what if analysis. And then here you go, you'll see it here, goal seek. I've already clicked on this cell, so it's, it's filled it in here. If you didn't click on it, you could just click here and, and select the cell. To value, well, the value we want it to be is zero. And the cell we want to change is this guy here, B6. That's the cell that we want to tweak to make this zero. So let's hit OK and let it do its thing. So I did that quite quickly. And you'll see we're, we're, we're nearly done. It's done exactly what it's, it's been told. It's, it's given us the perfect amount to make this zero. And that perfect amount is £87.64. pence. Point two four nine one nine three one, and you might spot this is the same as you know the same problem as before. This Charlie can't pay this amount because this amount goes to a very precise, um, a very precise amount. It can only go to the nearest pen. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete all that and acknowledge the fact that he can only actually pay eighty seven pounds and sixty four p. He can't do you know part of a penny. Now that's great, except for the fact that once I've changed that, you'll see he's still seven, power, uh, seven pence in debt at the end of it. So what we'll do is we're just going to change this very final payment. And instead of it being £87.64p, and what we'll do is we're just going to add, uh, we'll add seven pence on and just do pay a little bit extra that final month just to make sure we're all square. OK, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just highlight this. Let's make it clear that we change it. So this is this is how much he pays each month. He pays eighty-seven pounds sixty-four p each month, except for the last month where he just has to pay an extra seven p, and then we're all settled at the end of twenty-four months. That's part one taken care of. Part two asks the total amount of interest Charlie would pay. Well, this is all the interest he has to pay. He pays £8.50 in the first month, £7.82. So we just need to add up all these values. So in Excel, we just use the sum feature. I just want to find the sum of this column. And again, we get 101, uh, sorry, £103.43 is how much interest he's paying in total. OK. You could also find how much he pays back in total. So again, this is just maybe a different question. Total repayments. His total repayments would be the sum of the first column. Which is £2,103.43p. And again, you may this may be a way you've answered the question. You could have worked this out and then subtracted the original loan amount away, take away two thousand pounds. You'll notice you'll get the same answer if you do that. 